Hello, and tonight I'm talking about change and the fear of change. Now, over the last few days and, and months, you could say, coming back to the Aberdeen area, um, obviously Aberdeen has been through a bit of a recession and a lot of change. I've had a lot of clients come in to me and have been very concerned about the changes they're going through, whether it's change of job, um, loss of job. Um, or having to adapt um, in, in a relationship sense to change of things that have affected um, them because of change of people losing jobs it can affect relationships for example people who have worked offshore who are no longer working offshore and they're at home it can cause friction and stuff because they're not being away and it can end up in a little bit of a change now I've seen a lot of this in the 80s and in the 90s when I was active in the trade union movement and I learned some tools um, to deal with change and the best thing to do is not to panic and that's the worst thing you can do is, is panic and get, get the anxiety attacks about changing job or whatever and we often find you know when we do that we actually create more problems than we've first had in the first place you know it's just like when we say to a kid don't spill the juice what happens they spill the juice so we've got to be realistic and we've got to look at what we do and what we're, the way we operate now and, and today we've got all the uh, the multimedia sort of things like Facebook and stuff like that and the first thing we often do when we wake up in the morning is we put on our phone and we look at it and we get all stressed out you know about what's going on around the world and whatnot rather than getting up having a decent breakfast being relaxed you know, and then thinking about the day ahead if we've got a busy day is being the right frame of mind. If we're looking for work, for example, we need to be in the right frame of mind. We need to think about where we can go, where we can network, who do we know. And in and, and, and life, a lot of things is who do we know sometimes? And where can we go? Now, if we wake up more relaxed, and we've had a decent breakfast and we feel good, we don't have to put on the news. We can watch the news later on. And if we're really busy in our lives where we're maybe having to work harder because there's been the cutbacks, we have to think about, you know, if we might be a manager of a company or we could be the owner of a company. We've had to make some serious decisions just to survive these tough times. We have to take that step back and think about, you know, our business plan, think about survival plan sometimes just to get us through these tough times because it never stays the same. We have to look at different markets. We have to look at different opportunities. Now, how do we do that? One of the things that I've learned over the years is we can first see, and it's not just for fortune tellers like me, I don't even first claim to be a fortune teller, is we can, example, write a letter to ourselves from the future. And that's very simple to do, and just imagine something as if it had already happened. You know, like, um, pick a date, you know, something like, you know, something in July, for example, and, and say, what are you going to do that morning, what are you going to do that day, as if it's already happened. And set that process. If, if you're, for example, looking for a job or you've had difficulty in relationships and you're looking for new relationships or you're looking for that dream partner, you, know, you have to imagine it's happened before it has. So it's all about being able to believe to receive. And, you know, when we believe things, we start receiving. And it's not just about money, it's about quality of life. You know, I've had guys come to me who have been on something like in from £300 to £1,000 a day and basically crying down the phone to me, you know, telling me I've lost this job or I'm now um, down to like £200 a day, which is a lot of money in people's eyes. And some of them have adapted and some of them met their dream partners and moved forward because they've realised that money's not everything, the quality of life they have is, is more and it's maybe an eye-opener for a lot of people. So what I'm saying in this blog is to look at yourselves and look at what you're worth. You know, if you feel you're worth more and you want to get more in life, then sometimes we have to give a little bit, you know, and very often when I was a chef in my young days, we used to work for restaurants for nothing just to show how good we were. And we ended up in a very good negotiating place because they would see how good we were and didn't want to lose us. So we'd probably end up with a higher wage than we would have got in the first place. So it's trying different things and coming out of our comfort zones. Now imagine that you've been sitting there folding your arms like this and we suddenly have to change direction and do them another way. It's always awkward, isn't it? 
So we have to practice that change so we can do it straight away. So take the time out, think and plan ahead, but don't panic. Use a bit of mindfulness, use a bit of relaxation, and don't get caught up in what concerns us, like politics and whatnot. Now we can change politics later on when it's time to vote. And do all that times when you come home at night you can chill and catch up with the news. Not first thing in the morning, you want to keep that positive attitude, because that's what creates success. So I hope this blog helps you in the little tips I've got there. And if you need a little bit of help in hand, and you need to sort of look at your options, come and see me and have a chat. And thank you for listening, and all the best for the future. And take care of yourself first, because remember, it's all about you. And only you can change your attitude. No one can change it for you. So change for the better. Embrace the changes they're going through. Thank you.